So hello, my name is Marlene Schwed and I'm a resident in Ara in Switzerland, um, which is close to um, Bern, Basel and Zurich, it's kind of in the middle. <laughs> um, I would like to talk about um, endoscopic sinus surgery and the advantages of packing um, and dis or disadvantages of packing after sinus surgery. So first of all, endoscopic sinus surgery is done for patients who see CRS as refractory to medical management and it has become a well recognized and safe surgical option for those patients. It results in the restoration of physiological drainage pathways of the sinuses, facilita facilitates mucociliary clearance and enables application of rinses and also topical therapies to sinonasal mucosa. The caseload which I tried um, finding out, so there are about 250,000 surgeries annually in the US and about 50,000 in Germany I couldn't find for the whole of Europe, unfortunately. So the indications for sinus surgery, we of course have CRS, we have the complication of an acute rhinosinusitis to drain drainage of mucoceles, but also to get surgical access to tumors um, of the orbit in the anterior skull base. The aim is to, of course, to improve the quality of life of patients to eradicate infection and also reduce the use of medication. And even, if, even though the surgery is affected in most patients, there are, there are about 15 to 20 percent of patients who have to undergo revision surgery during long-term follow-up, mainly because of post-operative scarring, edema, degenerations and crusting, which re-obstructs the osteomyotel complex. So it is really important to address the risks, with um, post-operative risks, with, which include bleeding, synechia, adhesions, wound healing, and pain. So there have been a couple of methods to address those risks. So we use post-operative saline nasal sprays or do steroid sprays, but also oral antibiotics and oral prednisone. Um, however, there's still disagreement on the exact regimens. And also there, there has been still disagreement about the regimen of nasal packing, which I'm going to talk about. So the advantages of packing, this is my um, list. I will now um, quickly go through the list and then we'll cover each point. So the advantages of packing is that it reduces bleeding. It is um, here to prevent the formation of synechia, it supports wound healing, and it might deliver medication. There are in two, two types of packing. You can use resorbable packs, but also you can use non-resorbable packs. But I'll, t um, t I'll talk about the advantages of those two things later. The bleeding, um, post-operatively, um, what I found is um, it's more or less 2 to 4 percent of occurrence. And there are only two RCT studies um, looking at post-operative bleeding. Um, so there's a study by you at all and they um, used Meropax in the middle meatus after surgery, um, but only in children. And then there's another study by Kassel and colleagues and they um, used CMC, which is carboxymethylcellulose nasal packing. Um, and looked at, at, at its effect um, and its effect on bleeding. And they found that it is associated with less bleeding than if you use no packing. And then there are, there are a couple of observational studies that also support the, this, this finding. The next point is synechia formation after surgery. So the frequency is, is um, from 4 to 35 percent, and it usually occurs between the middle meatus and the nasal septum. And it's, uh, the thing is the middle turbinate often becomes floppy, um, either because of um, um, you had to lateralize it in order to get access to the sinoetmoidal, to, 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 to the sphenoetmoidal recess, or because of severe polyposis, or because of excessive excision of the basal lamella. So you have a floppy middle turbinate, um, and then adhesions, um, synechia might occur and revision surgery might be necessary. So um, the packing is used to reduce the nakia, 
And um, what was found in this study and this um, systematic review and meta-analysis is that if you pack the overall incidence of synechia formation decreases, there were six studies included in this analysis and um, they looked at it um, about four weeks post-operatively. However, <laughs> the big but, um, it was just the, the issue is the P. Uh, it is only short of, um, short of um, statistical significance. There's another study by Wang and colleagues, um, and they, the, the whole issue is um, there's a variable in characteristics between the studies and also the type of packing used. And they found that um, the prevalence of synechia was reported in three studies, ranged from about four to six, four to eight percent in absorbable packing groups, and from about eight to thirty-five um, percent in non-absorbable packing groups. Um, the monitoring, when they looked at those uh, synechia formation, um, it was in two studies, eight weeks postoperatively, in one study, twelve weeks postoperatively. But um, If we come to the next point, that was the healing of this endoscopic surgery. So healing is a very co a complex process. It, it ha goes through different phases. You have a correlation co cascade information phase, proliferation phase, and it's quite complex. And healing takes time. It, it depends like whether the basal membrane is, is intact or whether it's not intact. But the estimation is about six months um, or longer, which it might take, and the wounds after sinus surgery are quite extensive. So um, there are studies um, which looked at um, postoperative wound healing, and um, there's a study by Castle and colleagues. Um, they looked at the effect of carboxymethylcellulose packing, and basically they used um, the CMC pack in one side of the nostril, and the, on the other they used um, just like normal packing. Oh no, they didn't use packing at all; just like used a spray and rinses, and they didn't find a difference. So. The conclusion of this study was like maybe it balances out the application of the steroid spray and the packing on the other side. So another study um, on postoperative wound healing um, by Wang and colleagues, um, they looked at 22 patients with CRS with polyps who had a bilateral endoscopic sinus surgery and in each patient they packed one nostril with um, with a pack which was soaked with two milliliters of 3M quinolone, and the contralateral nostril just like had a normal pack and no, no 3M quinolone. And they looked eight weeks um, after surgery, they, um, they looked at the post scores, at the perioperative sinus endoscopy scores, and it basically showed the study that um, wound healing is better with the steroid so uh, soaked pack. So you can also see it here, so on the table, you see at week one and four, you see um, uh, it's lower, um, it, um, there's a comparison, it's better in the 3M groups, um, but it's not statistically significant. However, eight weeks postoperatively, it actually finally was statistically significant. Another group, they looked at uh, the medication delivery. So the group by Sang and colleagues, they looked, um, they, had, they made a systematic review and they included eight studies with patients undergoing sinus surgery for the CRS. And what they found that, um, they found a stati statistically significant improvement in postoperative endoscopic appearances when using uh, steroid impregnated absorbable nasal packing. They used the Lund Kennedy scores at, and then the, what you could see that one month postoperatively, there was a reduction of 0 0.88 uh, in the intervention group, and three months postoperatively, there was a reduction of 0 0.46 in the Lund Kennedy score in the, in the intervention group. So uh, looking at the post scores and the perioperative sinus endoscopy scores in, in this group, what they found one month, month postoperatively, there was a reduction of 1.5 in the intervention group, and two months postoperatively, there was a reduction of 1.23 in the post group. So basically, th this shows in the Lund Kennedy scores and the post data that there's statistically significant improvement in postoperative endoscopic appearances. So to sum it up, 
So basically, if you use packing, you have like potentially less post-operative bleeding. You may reduce the formation of synechia. You, if you use um, packing, it's um, the impregnation would um, would uh, improve the wound healing, and the medication delivering might also be an advantage. So now the next thing is the disadvantages. So. Of course, what you first think of probably is pain and facial pressure, especially the removal. Um, you have a nasal blockage, the disruption of sleep, um, last but not least the cost, and you might have major complications like uh, aspiration and the toxic shock syndrome. So first of all, pain. So packing, um, my, even though the surgery is like not associated with pain at all, the packing is associated with headaches, nasal pain, and abstract obstruction. And the removal might also cause pain. So Weitzler and colleagues, they looked at five studies and tried to examine the amount of pain caused by the different packing um, methods. And what they found is that resorbable packing material is more com comfortable for patients than convention conventional packing. So the outcome of this study was that if you um, use um, re um, dissolving packs, you have less pain. The, so this other studies by Xiao Shen and colleagues, they looked at pain after surgery. And what was found that one hour, the first one, um, 12 hours after surgery and 24 hours after surgery and uh, um, upon removal, you have less pain and this, this is only like in, in their systematic review and media analysis, they show that if you infiltrate those packs with topic, topical anesthetics um, after sinus surgery, um, there's, you see a reduction of pain and also an anxiety. So sinus nasal symptoms and a further disadvantage of nasal packing. So what you see here, there is a study by Kayono and colleagues. Um, and in group three, um, patients had a Miracell pack, whereas in group one and two, no packing was used at all. And what they found that the respiratory distress was a lot more in the, in the, in the group which had the packing. Patients who suffer from obstructive sleep apnea, you have, you have to make a difference between the mild form and the more severe form. And so what is interesting actually in the mild form, that's the mild um, obstructive sleep apnea where you have an RDI um, below 15. So you have a significant increase in snoring duration and also ODE, which is the oxygen desaturation index, if you, um, after surgery with packing. In the second diagram, that's a diagram with, a, um, with the patients who suffer from severe obstructive sleep apnea. They are, there's actually not that much of a difference between not packed and packed after surgery. So this might actually be due because in our obstructive sleep apnea patients, they're actually used to um, breathing through the mouth. The obstruction might be on multiple levels, including the to tongue base or soft palate. Um, so th there's actually not that much change. The group of Burdock and colleagues, they looked at the patient satisfaction and they looked at um, the satisfaction of patients um, when they are packed with a just normal pack or with the absorbable pack. And uh, they found that if, you are if patients were packed with a nasopore pack, um, the pressure, nasal blockage, headache, and also pain is a lot uh, lower. Um, so another disadvantage of um, nasal packing is the cost. It's probably different in the, in di in the different countries. Yeah. So um, a simple um, Rhino Rapid um, packing, which we use in Switzerland, for example, costs about 60 francs. Um, Nasapora found up to 130 US dollars per patient. So um, if you look at um, more severe disadvantages, it's, there's the risk of dislodgement. And there is this aspiration. I couldn't actually find that many studies. There were um, two case reports by uh, colleagues um, Smith and Nova, where like um, and they um, they found um, they had a case where a net cell packing and a nasopro packing was aspirated um, shortly after extubation. Though the patient had to go um, into the OR again and had um, to get it removed.
Um, toxic shock syndrome, um, so it's usually associated with deaf areas, which might lead to toxic shock syndrome, toxin one. And um, so the hypothesis is that patients after nasal surgery, they have more deaf areas, which may produce toxic shock syndrome, toxin one, and um, the, the packing might cause it. So actually what I found, um, it occurred in about 0 0.002 cases of all nasal and sinus, sinus surgery cases. Um, the colleagues of Stern Shavit, they um, finally made um, a decision analysis model. So they said that there are five variables which influence the result. So you have the disutilities of packing, of no packing, the disutility of synechia, probabilities of synechia for packing and of no packing bleeding wasn't actually included. So basically they say well, what you can see here in this graph is that um, this graph is a two-way sensitivity analysis. So if the probability of synechia with and without packing is shown here, so this reveals that as long as the probability for, for synechia formation in the no packing arm is lower than 24%, you shouldn't pack. This would be the better decision. Other other people have claimed that it's um, you don't it's you don't have to pack anyway, so you can just prevent adhesion formation if you um, kind of suture the middle turbinate to the nasal septum, if you um, get rid of most of the um, of the unkinate process, so you you have less risk of actually the synechia formation. You don't need packs anyway. Um, in Switzerland, I've asked my colleagues what they do in the different hospitals. In my hospital, we usually use um, an Edsel um, packing and also a Mirosel until the first post-operative day. Um, it's slightly different in the, uh, the hospitals. So last but not least, to come to a conclusion, um, in general, what you should consider. So you should consider the packing material, for one thing. You, you should consider do you want to use resorbable packing? Um, it might be more comfortable than the conventional packing. Uh, and you should actually consider whether it's necessary at all. And you best thing as always suited to the patient's need. So uh, we've seen quite a lot of studies now, but um, I think even though um, there's not one way, there's a consensus on choice. So we, the, a routine packing is actually not necessary. It might be advantageous to use packing um, to for the patient like as a feeling of security, also for the surgeon as a feeling of security. So for patients with coagulation disorders, also for like at the end of surgery, if there's like diffuse bleeding, even though you have coagulated a lot, um, you might consider using packing. In the whole studies I found, um, and also in the big meta-analysis and review, the issue often was that like, the studies which could e eventually only be used were only a few, um, which was because they were quite heterogeneous. In, in the method, but also in the packing material used, in the different time points. Um, so for the future, what, um, what one might, might wish for is that uh, you, the development of resorbable hemostatic packs which prevent adhesions and also promote the development of a normal and functional mucosa because we have seen it takes a long time to heal. And <laughs> of course, uh, more large multicenter studies which are less heterogeneous would, would, be, would be great. So I would like to end this talk with a saying, um, it's actually from my dad, um, he's not in the medical industry, but he always says like um, that it applies to all disciplines regardless of what you do. Um, he always says like, if you think good design is expensive, you should look at the cost of bad design. So always aim for the, for the best solution. Um, um, it will, like in the long term, be the best for the patient and also for the <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> Thank you very much.